Hey there, folks. All right, let's kick this off. It's about eight o'clock here. And as long as I haven't screwed up the time zones, so it should be the, the normal time. How y'all doing? I've got some weird stuff going on with the, uh, the chat here. Hey, how you doing? Uh. So basically, we're going to carry on chugging with the uh, erosion stuff. I uh, utterly failed to make any progress on it last week, but I did learn some stuff about debugging and a few things about um, not a number and some other kind of uh, floating point oddities. Uh, one of the things I realized, I've actually, uh, say, fixed one of the bugs off stream a few minutes ago while I was waiting to get started. Um, let's get this into a shape where we can actually read what's going on. So, one of the things that have been confusing me for a while was there is a... Let's go into the hydraulic erosion file. Um, I was worried about um, div division by zero. Um, and I couldn't understand because in the paper there's a lot of cases, or it's, there's, there's, a, there's a few cases, where you can end up with a divide by zero. And I was seeing some errors that were related to not a number um, spreading across my terrain and fucking everything up. And I it was putting it down to these division by zeros. Now, the paper can get away with it for its own reasons, maybe. Um, but I also saw this in um, a CUDA version of this. So if I go to here, actually, there's this cool implementation by Kahu. Um, who does, I mean, it's all inverted, but he does terrain erosion and CUDA, and it's, it's based on a mix between the paper we're using, um, and a couple of others. So it's not an exact match, but, um, he had these same situations where, let's have a see if I can find the K factor stuff. Here we go, down here where he's adding up the uh, flux values coming out of the given, given cells. Now, if the terrain were totally flat and the water in amounts in, them, in those cells are the same, then the flux will always be zero, and which means that then some flux will be zero, which means some flux times delta time will be zero, and then we've got to divide by zero. Now, what I hadn't appreciated at the time... Um, hey, Shimera, good to see you, man. I was starting to worry if I had uh, screwed up time zones. I think it's just that like, I, uh, I didn't announce this until very late. Um, I've been kind of bad at that the last few weeks. So I've got to fix that. Um, yeah, so we've got to divide by zero, but in, in, for CUDA, that's not a problem. Hey, Vid, good to see you, man. Um, because in IE floats, when you divide by zero, you get an infinity, not a, not, not a number. Um, and whether it's a positive infinity or a negative infinity depends on whether your um, nominator and denominator are negative or not. Because, of course, you can have negative zero um, in IE floats as well. So in this case, uh, they rely on the fact that CUDA is going to follow the IE uh, spec and give you a infinity for this result as long as this is zero or greater. Now, and then this min will cap it down to one and everything's fine. Um, now that is true on, let's see if I can remember, I've got the link here. That is true in GLSL 4.1 as well, but apparently not in GLSL 4. In GLSL 4, the result of a divide by zero is undefined. Um, and the uh, 4.1 is uh, properly defined to be the same as IE754. Vid, is that an is that IKEA Marcus? Now, there probably is some IKEA stuff around here, but I have no idea what a Marcus is or anything like that. A lot of this stuff I've uh, inherited from work, so I've been... <laughs> so yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of IKEA stuff around. And IKEA's roam naturally in the hills around these parts, so it makes sense. Um... Yes, yeah, so, so 
basically, there are valid cases um, for dividing by zero and still getting good behavior. So I've changed this to, um, I've, le I've left this as min one and I'm pretty happy with this being fine out as long as water height is never negative. And I found it, um, I found cases where that wasn't true and that was uh, causing a lot of problems. So I had a case where water height was negative, which meant this was negative infinity, which meant this whole thing was negative infinity, which meant that, um, everything was being scaled by negative infinity and then um, then you start getting your non numbers cropping up very quickly as things were written in and out of textures and other things were attempted to be done on this like eh, there were a number of operations trying to be calculated on the infinities like trying to get the normal of the terrain where one of the positions was at negative infinity and stuff like this so stuff screwed up and that all boiled down to when I was eroding I had read the paper incorrectly so if I go back to the paper, it says here, and it's really clear now um, when I look at it, to prevent negative water heights in equation 12c, this guy up here, uh, we clamp the dissolve amount um, to the water height in the cell. Now I had been doing this wrong because 12c is about, um, is about calculating the amount of water. So I had been clamping the amount of water to make sure that was in within some sensible bounds, but that wasn't what I was meant to be doing. I was meant to be clamping the uh, this value here, which is the amount of dissolved terrain um, to between zero and water height, which meant that you could never have more sediment than water um, in the uh, in the mix, basically, and which meant that when evaporation happened, you couldn't end up with sediment coming out because basically when you evaporate things sediment comes out of solution and the water height drops if there's more sediment in the solution than there is solution then your then your water height goes to negative everything explodes um and that's what i think was happening so i've made that change and i'm not getting the big old diamond of death anymore which is cool uh the only other side is that the water is looking really boring now when i when i rack up the the values I'm not getting the kind of interesting things. I'm getting, like, water is everywhere, which is cool, I suppose. Um, but it doesn't flow much. Um, and I'm kind of confused about that. It's possible that maybe the... Oh, shit, I spoke too soon. There's Diamond of Death again. Oh, well, balls. So I haven't fixed it. Damn! Darius! Hey, man! Well, uh, my internet is too shitty to watch. I get five second chunks. Damn! Um, I'll just check that that's not me. Ah, uh, the up looks okay. Let me check on Twitch to make sure that this is going. Um, da -da 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 -da, what am I doing? Okay. Um, where's... I'm not used to Windows. Right, Twitch. Pixel art lore, it's pretty smooth here. All good here as well. Okay, yeah, then Darius, you're right. I'm afraid it's you. Yeah, and uh, Twitch is saying everything is tickety boo. So, um, no dice. So, that's, uh, that's disappointing. I was thinking that was fixed and it's still buggered. Um... <laughs> I'm guess, oh, and it's harder to trigger now as well, so that's going to be interesting. Um, that's, oh, I'm on the wrong machine again. One second. Darius, problem on my side, just moved and got no real, real internet yet. Uh, I'm watching via mobile. Oof, yeah. Well, thanks for giving it a try. Um, let's, let's reset and see where we are. So I basically, I don't have a proper plan for what we're doing today, um, other than just hacking on this as usual. Uh, oh, wait a second, water evaporation height is much higher than it used to be. Let's uh, just set that. 
see if that makes any difference. Um, Tamara said, I tried fucking around with my streaming settings last week. It makes me very sad. It's practically impossible to stream anything. Full screen and good quality. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, oh, that's interesting. I'm, I thought I was streaming at 1080. Am I streaming at 720? That is actually possible. Um, I haven't checked the settings in quite a few weeks. Um, output. Stream. Where is it? Video. No, oh, I'm streaming in 1080, I think. I'm hoping it's look, not looking like garbled anus, but... Um, oh, yeah, I have very few moving parts of my stream. That is true. Um... Yeah, for games it doesn't work. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Hopefully Diamonds of Forever won't be the theme here. Jesus, man, I hope not. Another thing I find kind of strange as well is um, when I... Let's rack up the water again. Um, Now I'm having difficulty working out if I just move over here. So there is a lot of sediment type action going on down here. You can see under the, if we look under the water, that the terrain is being manipulated. But there's very little action happening on the hillside. Um, and I'm wondering why that is. Now of course there is more water moving around here, so we would expect more sediment to be moving around. I would also expect something happening up here. Um, I'm a bit worried that maybe my... So there, there is a thing that's meant to say that the deeper the water, the less um, erosion's going on. Because um, of... Oh, yeah, like... Underwater is just... Water speeds are lower in general. So there was a kind of a ramp factor to make... Um, to take care of that. Now... I'm not sure I've got that ramp. Um, what depth velocity? Hmm. Let's see if I can find it. Where is the ramp? Not there. It's got to be in step one. Um, Velocity 2D, Velocity 3D, Capacity, um, a road sediment's going to be in there. And it is going to be in, let's have a look. Let's have a look at water height and see where that goes. Time, hardness, sort of suspension rate, capacity. Um, nope, I'm not seeing it here. Maybe what capacity was involved. Um, water depth velocity scale, that was it down here. So the idea was that we would take the water height um, I guess all of that is under the maximal erosion depth, I, I would assume. Um, take the water height, divide it by the maximal erosion depth, and then clamp it between 0 and 1. Okay, so if water height was 10, this would be 1. If it was less than 10, it would be less than, uh, Yes, it would be less than 1. That's good. And then if it was deeper than that, then it would get capped at 1, and we would have 1 minus 1, which would be 0. Um, so any time that this is less than that, yeah, we should be getting some modification. Okay, so this, this ramp does look correct still. Did the first time I looked at it as well, but oh well. Um... Let's have a look. Love like Semtex. Hey man, good to see you. Hey, 
Hey, Zulu. Good to see you, man. Um, why do I have Twitch alerts on? What do you mean? Um, why do you have them so fucking huge? To be honest, mate, I don't know what you're talking about. So, um, I don't know what it is. Most places don't have a symmetrical as well, oh, Shimera, as far as the uh, internet speed goes, as far as I know. Hey, Barrod, good to see you, man. We're, uh, we're still battling away on the same thing as uh, last time. Which I thought just now I had fixed. I found another place um, where I was getting some errors. But we still got a diamond to death a minute ago. And, yeah, I guess we just have to keep on plowing away at this. Oh, okay, so yeah, I, I, did I just have a subscription that I missed? Sorry, to person who subscribed. Thank you very much for subscribing. Sorry I missed it because I was grumbling at things. Um, and yeah, I do have them, and they're huge, so hopefully I'll notice, but still it didn't work. Um... <laughs> like Japanese boss style wadding. Cool. Um... Battling erosion in New Zealand pastime. That's it, man. Uh, so, right. Let's... I'm not sure where to start other than just going through this stuff again. Um... I would like to know why we're getting so little um, activity up on these higher parts of the map. Like, I would expect some erosion. <laughs> Let's, um... Just expecting some movement vertically from this because we've got water hitting it all the time. Uh, water is landing everywhere. It should be enough to cap get some capacity. Unless... Now, I'm still interested about this. Um... So it's down to this is the capacity function. So we have the ramp, that's the water depth stuff, which should be fine. Um... If water height is incredibly low, then this is going to be nearly one. So this won't be scaling everything down. Um, the length of velocity 2D is a factor in this. So at very low velocities, it's going to be picking up very low amounts of uh, terrain. Let's um, go and put on the velocity map again so we can see what's going on. See, that there is velocity on the side of those hills. Um, we can only see it from one side of the hill because, of course, then it's negative values on the other side, but more or less, we're seeing some stuff there. Um, so, where are we? Length of velocity 2D will be non-zero. I suppose there's this bit. Um... The normal is still an interesting case. I wonder if I should just visualize those normals to see how fucked up they are. Because it is possible. If, if the normals are wrong, then there's a bunch of stuff wrong. And then sediment capacity is one. So, yeah, that should be fine. I suppose we could um, have a look at this. If we go back to calc capacity here and we just make some variable called foo and we throw the dot product in there. Um, one thing I did do off stream also is I added an extra texture to um, our FBO just for debug stuff. So I can um, I can spit values into one of the textures and we just get that there. So what I want to do, I guess, is to find out what's in here. So, I can go and look at terrain again, and get the states, uh, state source, that should be valid, ah, but that's only going to be valid after, um, doo -doo -doo. this is step one, so after step one, 
let's have a look. So we do step one, we swap the terrain and then I want to um, Yeah, I want to grab that debug information. Yep, we'll do that. Let's have a look at what's going on over here first, though, because... Oh, um, oh, you finished the little prover. Nice one. Highly recommended. Cool. Right, that goes on the list of, list of books to see. Right, so... I'm clicking things on the wrong screen, of course. As is my want. Uh, def uh, temp zero nil. And that's temp zero. Set f temp zero to be uh, cool one g um, debug map. And this is going to be a sampler. Let's get to rain again, and we go state source. Terrain, um, debug map, which is going to be a sampler, and then we want the texture from that, so we do the sampler texture, and that's what we're going to pull. Okay, and now temp zero will be populated. Actually, you can just do this. Air of C, temp zero. And then, I don't know, let's have a look. That's gonna be a little fiddly. We really need to visualize this in some better way, but uh, normals are just, normals are just difficult to visualize. So I think we're gonna have to do something better than this actually. Um, wait a second, no, this was a dot product, wasn't it? Wait a second. What have I been saving? What am I doing? Who am I? What is going on? Yeah, so we're doing a dot product, which is going to give us a float. Because um, this is the projection of the velocity 3D onto the negative normal. That's kind of interesting. So if we have, if we have some terrain, have I not set this going yet? No, I haven't. There we go. Uh, if we have some terrain... We have a velocity that's going downhill, hopefully. We have a normal. And it's saying take the negative normal and then dot product it with that, um, which will project it. Is that necessary? It's kind of strange. We do it this way. So surely you could project it on that side as well. Hmm. Let's have a look at what happens if we just not negate the normal. Um, well, nothing dramatic happens, that's for sure. Bummer. Uh, yeah. Or draw a line. Yeah, I, I, sh I should get some... Um, <laughs> Some road letter media fans in excellent. Right. Um, oh, of course it's not affecting it here. We don't. Oh man, Chris, you're an idiot. Calc capacity. We have to change to this one if we actually wanted to do anything. Well, that has an effect on something. <laughs> oh yeah the green well the water's certainly picking up sediment faster now I'm not sure if that's correct. Let's just put it back to how it was. Yeah. Not 100% on that. Okay, anyway, we, um, what do we do with our normals? 
once we calculated them, we don't do a lot with them actually. We use them for calculating capacity. Whoa, yes, foo is gone now, of course. Um, We don't do much else with. Yeah, we don't really do anything else with the novel. It's kind of odd. Um, no, that makes sense. We weren't using it velocity for velocity 3D because we could just use the terrain heights. Um, I suppose it's worth looking at this capacity function again and just making sure I haven't done anything really stupid there. Oh, actually, here it is. Uh, capacity is the. KC, which is the sediment capacity, negate normal at the current position, uh, dot producted with the um, with the three D velocity, yeah, multiplied by the magnitude of the two D velocity, and again uh, mag multiplied by the L max, which I can't remember what that was, but. Um, Oh, L max must have been that ramp function um, based on depth of the water. So let's let's just make sure that's correct. Um, their final capacity one, yeah, L max, where L max is a ramp function, yeah, defined by this. Yep, that's correct. Damn it! Why are we correct? Makes things difficult. Um, it does seem strange that uh, if the flow is parallel to the surface, it gives zero interaction. Um, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? It's a little bit odd. Um, well, oh, okay, so the idea of... Hmm. Do they do that? Do they factor that in here? Part of the reason for that... Um, El Max is Spanish edition of Max Headroom. I am perfectly fine living in that universe. So that is now canon. Um, the reason for the parallel thing is that what they wanted to achieve was that um, the empirical formula erodes terrain proportional to the surface slope to allow uh, some erosion in flat areas. Is there a lower limit for blah, blah, blah? Wait, is that? No, this can't be right. I thought there was something about basically you wanted to calculate the 3D normal so you could work out where the water was hitting. And the idea was the more oblique angle to the surface that you're hitting, the more terrain you'd be chipping off. But yeah, that doesn't essentially mean that your flow is going to be like we're trying to flow downhill. So in the normal case, we're going to be traveling parallel to the terrain, which will mean, yeah, that we're picking up no sediment. That's a really good point. Um, That's kind of balls. Hmm. Let's look at what the other guy does. So when, um, I think in his one, he does it differently again. Um, I think he uses a simplified capacity model, if I remember. Simulate erosion. Right, so in here, there should be capacity. Yeah, there we are, there's capacity. Um, UV, UV, UV and VV. Let's see what the definitions of those two velocities are. Oh, we're just pulling them out of uh, this function. Okay, so what's the UVAL? So I would have thought that was the...
Okay, so this is resetting the velocity field to zero. Um, hmm. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, this is the, oh, man. CUDA code, I'm not so good at reading it. Um, Uh, well, actually, this is just straight up C++, but uh, there's some other stuff going on as well. I'm kind of lost in it all, I can tell you what. To uh, GDP, P-U-Y-D-T, I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name. Uh, passing by to say hi, super cool project. Follow along to YouTube. Thanks so much, dude. It is lovely to have you here. Um, and I'm sorry that... Wow. Shouldn't apologize. This is just like watching me fail for a while. So, um, what is going on here? Where are these definitions coming from? What is even happening? Um, okay. Oh wait, this is the CPU one. Oh, so where was the CUDA model? Oh, I've got myself confused again. Which one am I even looking at? Anyway, there's gotta be some information around here. So let's go back to, let me look at that simulation again. Um, let's look at the header files. There's got to be, okay, so 2D grid of floats, grid 2D float, okay, so that's, U velocity, V velocity. Okay, so he doesn't seem to be bothering with um, 3D velocity at all. It's just the 2D velocity and the components are stored in U vel and V vel, which makes sense. UV is in, UV is in a texture. Um, I'm not going to go and find the CUDA implementation right now because that will just confuse me even more. But I did find some useful stuff around there at one point. Um, okay, so this is just... Yeah, this is how we calculate the velocity field as well. So it seems, it would seem, um, that this person is going for a simplified... Uh, capacity definition, which is fine, um, but it doesn't help us, unfortunately. Hmm. Let's go back to the paper and read this section again. Hopefully we can glean something. Um, Kudakov was written by Templatibus from Look. Yeah. That kind of bad. That does ring a bell. Oh. Double check what links you've got open before you start streaming. So. What are we doing? Um, okay. Using our flow fluxes, we can calculate the 2D velocity um, field that is needed to calculate hydraulic erosion and deposition. It's this bit. And this bit is the same, I believe, in the other chap's stuff. Where is, um, yeah, this is it in Lisp, which is just uh, subtracting and summing and dividing by two, which is uh, also around here. He's got, come on, where is it? Oh, it's. Must have been calculated higher up. Oh yeah, this was calculated in the previous step. Ah, oh, I'm not going to find that again. It is not exciting. Um, anyway, it's this bit. 
the y component is calculated in a similar way. Cool, yeah, that's just the x component of the uh, of the 2D vector, 2D velocity rather. Okay, since we know the velocity vector, we can calculate C, water sediment transport capacity. It represents how much sediment can be transported in a cell. And this is the f original formula, which I think harkens back to one of the older papers. Um, and it's talking about the local tilt angle, which is fine. This empirical formula erodes to a pro proportional to the surface slope. To allow some erosion of flat areas, there's a lower limit for this. Um, that's interesting. So the limit's not shown here. We might have to do some limit on ours as well. Uh, fluid erosion in real world is highly dependent on water depth. Uh, deep sea floors are practically never eroded. Yes, um, because the water flow is slower in deeper waters, although sediment capacity of deep water is larger due to the larger water volume. On the contrary, the contrary is explained. Um, to simulate this, we add a ramp. And that was the ramp here. So we've still got the original sign of all this gibberish. Um, and that's cool. Okay, so this is where we get to here. Moreover, we include true 3D collisions between water and terrain surface, where N is the surface normal at point yada, and big V is the 3D water uh, flow vector calculated from the surface tangent and the 2D velocity vector. Um, but if it's tangent to the surface, we're getting less erosion, which is kind of annoying. Um, erodes more soil if the water collides with these um, yeah, here we go. Yes. So this was the point. This modification erodes more soil if the water collides with the surface and angles closer to perpendicular. With our model, we observe some ripples on sea floors, similar to sand ripples on uh, real world seashores. At this point, there is a decision uh, by using the sea capacity. Okay, so that's this gets into uh, using that capacity value. But yeah. I think we need to put some limit on that as well, because otherwise... Otherwise it's rather difficult, unless... Now one of the things I'm not doing when I calculate the um, 3D velocity... Where is it? Here we go. Um, I just look at the dif difference in terrain height. I could look at the difference um, when you add on the water depth as well for those given places. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that. See if that makes any difference. We just want something to start chipping off the sides here. It's, hmm. Yeah, let's have a look. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, so terrain heights being passed in. Where is this anyway? Like, where is this called from? Can I do that? Oh no, of course I can't, because it's GPU function doesn't work in quite the same way. And get height, water, sediment, UVs. Let's just have a look at that again. Um, let's just also pass in the water height. It's the simplest way to get something going. So terrain height, and we'll get the water height for the current cell. Um, and then we'll add terrain height to water height. And then down here we'll use it. I wonder if we could um, just draw capacity. That would be quite nice. But now it should mean that um, we're looking down here. Like, basically it should mean that 
when we've got a terrain, oh, there's our terrain, but whatever. We've got some terrain and we pick a point, then we also add the, the rain that's just fallen and then we calculate the 3D vector, which will be, because it started a little higher, it will now be a down a little bit. Maybe that's correct. Ah, oh, I'm not sure, actually. Is that going to be right? Just think about that. Um, yeah, the Y component is going to be a greater negative. So, yes, that should, that should be resulting in more things being chipped off the higher places, but... Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. We would want to see something here. Um, I suppose one of the things we could do is just screw with the value and see at what point we get we get anything noticeable happening. Um, I kind of missed the points we could see all the water flowing down the hill. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of still confused as to why there's so little here all of a sudden. Um, if I just go back to hydraulic erosion and is the evaporation really happening that fast? If I just take out that, so everything looks very static. And I suppose that makes sense. If, I mean, if the terrain on the side of the hill isn't changing and the rain's falling at a constant rate, then maybe, but. Still a little odd. Hmm. Okay. So. Yes, we were going to mess with capacity. So let's go back and look at capacity. Um, Nothing. <laughs> we will see. Um, okay. Length velocity 2D will be very low at first. That will, will make sense. Um, One of the other things, I've left some a few notes around here for things I had to look at. Um, let's just leave that there for a second running and we'll go back to terrain. I had something I was worried was a bug or might be causing an issue. Um, now we take the 2D velocities coming out. Okay. We throw away the velocities here. And why do we do that? Let's just make sure I understand this. So it's uh, water height sediment, flux, and I think this one was velocity. Um, water height sediment, flux is velocity. Yeah, definitely. So why do we not do anything with this? But we don't add it on to the current velocity. So I guess we should check to see what the paper says about um, accumulating velocity over time. Whew. So, back up here. The velocity field seems to just be calculated from the fluxes. With outflow fluxes we calculate the velocity field. Hmm.
again, and we've got these horrible glitchy piles of crap. Ah, oh, infuriating. There is water flowing down here. Well, at least there's that. And there is some perturbation here of the ground, so that's something, I guess. It just none of it looks nice. And you would expect more things going on here. I mean, it might be that we've currently left out the thermal erosion component entirely. Um, so we could bring that back in. And that exploded. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, wow, that's really fast death. Awesome. Yeah, and cavitation. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it's cavitation on C. I I see. Um, so the flow sediment erosion should be dot product with the vertical since it's meant to be proportional to the slope. Um, and the impact set erosion should be dot product with the normal to the surface. That's interesting. Let's... Let's go back here and I will uh, see what you mean. Uh, that, that does sound interesting. Okay, so let's turn off the uh, thermal erosion stuff, seeing if that just explodes right now. Thermal. Oh, come on. Reset. There we go. So there's water. And there's stuff going on. Oh yeah, and the, uh, we've got to go and find that 0.5 that I just left in there. As soon as that's not based on anything real. Woof! Wow. That ditches everything very fast. Um, okay. So Barad, I, I want, need to understand what you were saying here. So the flow sediment erosion should be dot product with vertical since it's meant to be proportional to the slope. Now, the proportional to the slope bit was um, the empirical uh, formula erodes terrain proportional to the surface slope. That was in this version. But when they got down here, they were talking, I, I thought this was the, like, as I read this, I thought this was kind of the evolution of the capacity function rather than two separate ones. Um, so I think they did away with looking at the angle um, of the terrain and instead used the 3D velocity um, against the normal instead in, in this part down here. I think it's meant to have contributions from both. Well, that would be interesting. That would definitely screw up what I've been doing. Um, let's see if that makes sense when reading it. In the original model, C is calculated as. So that's talking about the previous papers. Um, So then this is clearly just, um, this one is clearly this one with the modification they're talking about here. They just take exactly the same thing and multiply it by the ramp function. So this is, this can be said to be a replacement of that. So 10 is a replacement. Um, L max is a ramp function that is defined blah. Okay, right. And then we get down here. Um, moreover, we introduced true 3D collision. And again, this looks like, like they just swap out this component um, with this one, which makes sense given what they're writing here. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it would be nice but uh, to, to use the other one, and I, I might end up doing it just to get something, but it doesn't seem to be what they're saying if I'm reading this correctly. Um, I guess one thing to do, one thing I very much noticed in uh, this other person's in the C++ version, not CUDA, um, is the, what was it? The normal calculation is interesting. Um, it creates a vector three, where this it like, so the um, X and Y is used for the, um, the plane itself, so it's it's um, y is depth and z is height. Um, if I'm getting that correct, oh, maybe I'm not. One second, yeah, I haven't entirely worked out why this is a uh, correct normal, um, and just confused as to why to the um anyway so yeah, thinking that so uh, barad is saying uh he's having a look at the paper and it looks like 10 is uh, the modified nine as i said but 11 is additional it's the reason i wasn't thinking it was additional is we've still got the l max exactly as before here and just before that, we've got the 2D velocity magnitude. You can't select things properly because it's a PDF. Um, I'll try anyway. There we go. Um, in both of these. And the only part that seems to be switched out, you've got the KC at the beginning, uh, which is the constant um, erosion function, uh, capacity function. And then we've got this blighter. Which, and they say that, again, this is based on the tangent to the surface, yada yada. And if we're at the tangent to the surface, then we're already kind of taking into account the slope. Um, oh, it's like the flow. Ah, yeah, I'm not sure. And the negative normal. Again, that doesn't matter. Right, I need to understand what my normals actually are, because if those are wrong, everything's wrong. So I need to fucking sort out that. So where's our normal? Okay, I just can't keep assuming that's correct, because it's going to screw me over if it's not. So, we've got calc terrain normal. Um, I'm going to have to go and find... I'm, I'm going to have to make this text smaller because it's going to be impossible for me to do this otherwise. Let's look at the rendering stuff. So, sorry if this is a little hard to read on the stream. Um, I'll try and not do this for too long. Okay, so the water height sediment map is all that's needed. So get water height sediment from UVs, water height sediment map. Yes, we can do that. Um, so if I just do hmm. well, this is going to be interesting. This is one of these times that I start regretting I did this Silly thing with the geometry shader to show it off, but um, hmm. let's have a look. Anyway, the first bit is I need the normal. So let's dump this here, we get some data, and then we can go and calculate the terrain normal with this. So if the gods are good to us, <laughs> that's very strange. Oh, yeah. Normal. There is no applicable method for the get height when um, with argument types back to oh, of course yes uvs in this case if uvs zero um with vec2 and v sampler 2d hmm is that not? Okay. Um, oh no, it wants the erosion UVs. Okay, fair enough. UVs is based on this. 
Oh boy, this is just gonna just gonna keep on coming. Um, oh, is there a simpler way of doing this? I feel like I'm kind of painting myself into a corner here. Every time I turn around like, to do something, I'm getting a little more confused. Um, maybe I can get this data here instead. Yes, I know, data isn't available. Um, Love that, right? So, where did frag normal come from? I saw a normal down there. I was talking about frag normal coming from here. Nope, that must have been something else. Never mind. Um, Symbol data is undefined. Yes, that does make sense. And that's now gone. Okay, right, back up here. Yeah, at this rate, I'm gonna have to actually switch over to doing a different task, which is to try and build some tools into Kevl to make debugging not suck. Um, because being a noob at all this graphic stuff, I just want to look at some values, and this is getting really difficult to do. Um, text size is... version UVs. Um, AREF course, yes. So now we get some normals and I can pack them in here. And that means that then this will freak out. Oh, wow. I understand that there's a linking error, but it, that should have been caught by the compiler as well, which is good. Come on, bring it on. More problems. I can take them. I didn't want that one. Don't give me that one. Um, oh, dear. Shimera can attest to this. Don't build your own stack. Use someone else. Use an engine. Use tools. Don't do this. Oh dear. Clip boss, UV normals. Yep, UV and normals. Should have been a VEC3. Um, calc terrain normal does return a VEC3. Come on. So, normal is that. So, V stage out. So two of those. Um, sorry, it's one of those each, which means three of those in the next stage. <laughs> Chimera's best option, build your own stack and kill yourself in the first week. Agreed. Agreed. Right. Why is this? Interested to why I'm still getting this issue. So... Oh. oh, no, that's the fragment stage. Right, so from the vertex stage, I should be getting... I know, I know this. This is Unix. Right, um... I'm sorry this is so confusing to watch at the moment. 
Watch a man be confused. Great way to spend your time. Right, let's do this. Okay, right, that compiles at least. Um, so the issue was that uh, the pipeline was still using the older version of the stage. And that was that. Um, Ribka, as a hobbyist fourth user, I've built my own stack called... <laughs> Good job, that man. Ah, cool to see some fourth people in as well. That's great. More weird languages. Okay, right. What to do, what to do, what to do. Um, we've now got some normals going down into here. So the idea is, I suppose, we can emit another triangle for every corner, and that could be the normal at that corner. Uh, that means the max vertices coming out of here is nine. Um, and then we want to emit another triangle. No, not match vertices. So it's going to be, um, it's not going to be nine, is it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, another triangle for every for every poly. Yes. Okay. Whew. Okay, so we're gonna take the terrain position. Initially, then we'll take have a look at this oh man that's actually quite frustrating as well now nah, that'll be okay we can leave the UVs as they are it doesn't really matter if they're kind of screwed up um, Let's just take zero and add on, I don't know, a small number to move it, shift it over to the left, and then we will, so that be that one, that one, then we've got to go up. Okay, and then we want to do, um, whoops, terrain process zero plus zero, five, or four, zero. <laughs> Okay, let's try. Let's see what we get. We compile that. Um, can't add a vec four to a vec three. That's reasonable. Okay, so now we should have hairy spikes everywhere, and they should be pointing roughly. Oh, they're all pointing straight up. Of course they are, because I've just said, go up four. So instead of that, well, at least that proves a concept. Um, I wonder if we can, if I just use the same UV coordinates for all of them, then at least they should be one solid color each. Let's set this to be 10. Let's set this offset to be something slightly bigger, slightly smaller. Okay, so that should be, these should be our normals eventually, I think. Um, so now we need to take the normals we passed in. I think I'll just take normal from one corner because we're getting a polygon on at a time. I don't think it matters that we're only pulling one out. So let's just do that. We'll take this, we'll multiply it by 10 because it should be normalized, one would hope. ARF normals, zero. Boom! Okay, so what have we got here? There's no applicable thing um, for... Of course, that makes sense. Um, Oh yeah, why am I putting that in the middle of that? That makes no sense. Let's get rid of this. And we get a different one, which is about, yeah. 
no applicable thing for addition when one is of x4 and one is of x3. So we just do this and it is gone. So they've all buggered off. Where are they all? That's worrying. Um, something strange is happening. Nobody's Lemons. That is a fantastic name for a start. And hello. Um, Got to read up about the fourth stuff now. More important than whatever I'm doing. Um, da 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 da. Cool. Nobody's lemon saying, first we need to build a modern list machine for first essentials. Ha ha, somebody get me a bag of sand. That's better. I was worried about you for a second. Oh no, it's one of these people. It's the lisp everything people. But that's good. That's fine. Um... <laughs> Mostly G fourth. Interesting. I haven't used that. I haven't used any of the fourths. So that makes sense. Um... Barrett's linking uh, some kind of paper. Let's have a see what this is. Oh, shit. Don't click the ban button. Don't want to ban anyone. This is great. Okay, so. Ah, uh, moving forth. Cool. Yeah, I need to read that. Ah, oh, more things to read. Man, so many things to Google now. So, sorry, I'm not reading out all the chat in the stream. It's mostly just random things about a fourth. If you're interested in that kind of thing, um, Shimera, it logs all the streams. So there's, uh, if you go to Shirakuma, uh, you can find where all those are. We should actually, actually link those in the, uh, in the YouTube video. I'll do that. Um, hello, I've been following Cable for a while. That's awesome. Thank you. Young Lena, hey, good to see you again. It's been a while. Um, <laughs> ban me from life, please. No, you stay. Out of pure spite, you will stay. Um, cool, 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 cool. Right, now, stop being distracted and carry on trying to do whatever it is I'm failing at right now. Um, why are the normals weird? Why are there no normals, more importantly? Oh. So if we negate it, there's normals everywhere and they're wrong. They're all vertical. What is going on here? So I suppose one thing I need to check is that the values that I'm getting through from the other side, from the other side, are uh, same so are uh, uh, correct so if i just say normal um and we'll do normalize one two three and they're gone well that actually that's correct because they would have been negated now if i look Somewhere, anywhere, for God's sake. There should be normals. But there's not. God damn it. What is going on? Oh, wait a second. Uh, geometry is like a vertex stage, isn't it? So don't we have to set that to one? Otherwise, it's, it's still in clip space, I think. That looks very small. Which is worrying. That means... Uh, okay, so let's... What is happening here? Hold on now. If I set it to one, they get slightly longer. If I set it to two, they seem to be shorter again. Am I just looking at this at a strange angle? <laughs> the 
This is not my Dave. Okay, I need to step back and read this again, see what I'm doing. Um, let's have a look. Agus, do you ever look on at the Lisp threads on the lane chan? Uh, no. But if that's lane as in the series lane, I watched that again fairly recently. I just binge watched it and it was so fucking good. What a great anime. <laughs> Shimera. Fuck you, Bagus, you ain't my dad. You sure about that, boy? <laughs> I'm old and I might have been to Switzerland. Right, um... with all these spooky links. I don't know, man. It's fourth people. You never know what they're going to link. Um, but Lisp is in Lane, but Lane Chan is a real low-key image board. Nah, I just don't. I, I haven't been there. Um... Not usually my bag, but why? Why are we having these problems? What the fuck is going on? Okay, so if we have a normal and we're just, we're taking some value, we're normalizing the fucking thing and we're passing it across. That means every vertex that's coming out of the vertex stage is going to have this same goddamn thing. Um, let's set the this to be three and this to be one. I just get it to be and, it, and it's normalized, so the length of this is definitely one, right? And then we get down to here, and we're taking um, the entire polygon as one unit because we're in the geometry stage, and then we're emitting new things. So the first thing we emit is a uh, is this, um, which is one primitive, one triangle, which is using the original positions, and then. We met another triangle, um, which is meant to be representing the normal. But what I don't understand is... Ah. It's how this is happening. Wait a second, though. Oh, so, okay, so the clip position is going to be a VEC4. So yeah, this is already in clip space, so I don't need to add zero here, otherwise I'm going to be screwing with all kinds of things. But then, then stuff be weird. Um, ah, oh, this is meant to be simple. I suppose the other thing I could do is just run this as a separate pass, not try and put it in here and just have another geometry pass entirely. Um, come on over here, leave you kids for two seconds. <laughs> Bring on the fourth, more of it, more of everything. <laughs> what have I done? This is the price of a pun, I suppose. Yep. Puns are dangerous. Don't do them. Don't do puns, kids. Um... <laughs> okay. 
So what do I do? What do I do? So just taking in the position as it was before and then emitting it was fine. Um, that got us valid geometry. Then again, I go and do this. And clip space. So I do one, zero. God damn it. They are there. <laughs> Not very clear, but they're there. Um, you can see the polys there. I don't understand how the, uh, the depth of this has got so screwed up. We have one vertex here, one vertex slightly offset but at the same height, and one at the original position, but along the direction of the normal. For some reason, that's suddenly just not, that's not okay. Oh, this was not meant to take this long. This is meant to be super quick. You can see them all down here. You can see they're all wrong as well. But um, what's confusing to me as well is like, if I do this, not one, zero, there they are. If I do two, they get bigger, I do three, right? It's pretty damn simple. And that is the same as right, that's exactly the same. And then I can do this and they're longer. And then we've got them all over the terrain. Big old hairy terrain. Hooray. And then what we're doing instead is we swap this out for the uh, for one of the normals. It doesn't even matter which one, just a ref normals zero and suddenly it all goes garbage. But the normal we're taking in is this normal and it's just, it's so simple. Like this should be, we do zero, one, zero. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, it didn't like that then. Ah, okay, I wonder if, yeah, wait, maybe it was more visible now. Let's just see. Because it could be a space where this is lining up correctly. Also, when I'm drawing this terrain, I should probably just draw it two-sided because I don't really care about the uh, performance hit. So, where is John? Where is this being used? This is in the terrain pipeline. God damn it, Chris. Sort it out. Right. Train pipeline's used there, and it's going to be used somewhere else as well. In the draw terrain. Cool. <sighs> right. So what now? Um, Oh yeah, that was it. We want to say when we're drawing, we're just going to go with setf. Um, oh no, just with setf. And it's what's the function we're looking for? Never remember the name of it. Um, depth test function, I think. Um, oh yeah, we just do do it like this. It's less than. So if we just do setf to nil, that will set the depth function to nothing for this scope. Do we want it? It's not, oh no, it's not the depth test we want to do, is it? Where we want to do the, what's the thing for drawing um, two sides oh, for um, back face culling? 
something to do with face anyway. Face. Okay, maybe not. Kevl.context. Front face, that was what it was called. Front face. Counterclockwise. Um, what are the valid values for this? Have I not written documentation for this yet? You lazy fuck. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Okay, right. I'm gonna have to get have to get around to that then. Um, define context function. Front face, GL front face, winding direction. Um, okay. Who let me ship this code with bad documentation? What an idiot. GL front face. Those two, okay. Ah. Scene is composed. So I want to disable um, GL. Oh, it's GL cull face. That's the other thing. Cull face back. Right. Did I write docs for this? No! Scum! Terrible. Right. Oh, I need to sort this out. It will not do! <laughs> oh, that's Adobe's Lemons. I've been trying to foster a decent community there, and I assume that's the Lane Chan thing. Um, by trying to answer many questions, making generally high-quality posts. Well, that's really cool of you. Uh, maybe I will have to pop by then. It's uh, it's nice to see more Lisp stuff being done, that's for sure. I just enjoy it. Um... <laughs> Zulu, Storm is hitting real bad. If I die, tell SPCL I love her. We all love SPCL. And we'll tell her. It's okay. Um... Barad. <laughs> Loving her breast for some reason. Man, I like me some breast. Pixel Outlaw, have you considered have you considered reprogramming this in Rust? No. Rust is very cool though. Right. Um let's have a look. If face, okay, yes, yeah, so what I can do is go to, let's just go back to wherever I was. What is all this? Wow, that's from a while ago. Um, cull face, I'll set that to nil for that duration. There we go. Um, okay, so there's always these bloody hairs everywhere now, good. And if we go under the terrain as well, we should see that the, it's rendering both sides of the terrain, which means our curl face is working correctly. Now, finally, fuck. Terrain. Where's render? Let's just beef this up a bit. Okay. Um... Okay, we've got the normal. Take this out, and suddenly they're gone. So we should be able to find the damn things. Yeah, they're all pointing in the wrong direction. They're all pointing straight down too, which is highly depressing. So it looks like our normals are backwards. Um, and they're crap. <laughs> this will not have been helping the terrain at all. There's the, uh, the erosion stuff. Um, God damn. What a stupid thing.
Wait there. Nope. <laughs> oh dear. Well, the reason for it is I'm not transforming the normals by the matrix in the vector space, am I? Stupid bugger. Right. Um, so. So we should be able to go from... Will it be okay just to go from view to clip space or do we need to go the whole shebang? Well, to view space... Yeah, let's, let's do it. Okay. That's embarrassing. Times well to view on normal times. See, so far with all these ones, I've... um. All, the, all these streams, I've been trying to only work on this while you guys are watching. I might end up doing some of this, more of this offline. I have, I mean, I've done cleanup offline, but I haven't done any real work on it. I might end up hacking on this while you aren't here, because um, I don't want too many more episodes of it to be just this. Because I think you'll be, f it would be fair for you to get tired of this after a while. I mean, what are we now? We're at half nine again. Man. Um, Of course, feel free to chip in if you enjoy watching this. Just, just we struggle with this forever, but um, I'm getting a little tired of it. Some of this stuff I should just hammer out in my free time. Right, what is this? There's no applicable method for the multiply when. Call the vec3. Where's the vec3 coming from? This guy's a VEC4. Um, oh, is this just... Oh, this is just an old one, isn't it? Yep. Error that I hadn't closed. Okay. Right, so now let's see if our... Um... go down here and look at our normals again. We're just multiplying them by 10. So whatever we've done. So. Okay. Now, if I rotate the camera, they shouldn't be following us now, which is good. So, there's that, at least. They're a bit bloody long, so it's hard to tell exactly what's going on there. So let's try and shorten them a bit. And now, at least the normals appear to be sticking out of the side of stuff. Saying that though, they still seem to Okay. Hmm, I'm not sure they look like they they look like they're moving with the camera to me. What have I done? What have I done? Okay. So, The normal should have been world space, so it should have been just fine to just, yeah, do world to view and view to clip. Oh. 
Right. Let's go over to the chat. Nobody's lemons. I need to get better at restarts. So I usually just kill everything and start over. Yeah, I've got a, a just a restart thing all the way around, like just around the main loop, so I can hit continue all the time and just skip that frame essentially. Um, what have I done? But other than the fact that, so the first thing we've got to deal with is definitely the fact that uh, the normals are negated. And if I'm looking at this correctly, they're also pointing, oh, it's all just a bit, it's a bit janky, isn't it? Let's have a look at that calc terrain normal thing. Really? Well, that suggests that this is just wrong. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> Need some reliable debugging tools. Got to, got to get some. This is just uh, debugging. The debugging is just miserable. So we need we need something. If, if I've learned nothing else from this terrain simulation, it's that I need reliable debugging stuff in Capital. Because there's some stuff here that I just don't get the behavior of. Maybe that will have to be switch away from this for a while. I I didn't want to switch away from this until we were done, just because it felt like then I was giving up, but whew. yeah. Barad, is there some uh, SLS slope limit stability in the paper? Yeah, um, there's the, what was it called? Um, there's the thermal erosion stuff, which is very much slope based, and that's uh, yeah. If it's over a certain, over a certain angle, then stuff will fall downhill and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Based on the talus angle and that. Luckily, I mean we haven't started incorporating that yet because I haven't fixed this stuff. Yeah. All good programmers have beards. Well, I'm letting the side down then, aren't I? Um, pixel outlaw grace always counts. <laughs> All right, what type of uh, debugging facilities are you thinking of? Mainly, I want to use uh, transform feedback and um, automatically add in additional uh, render targets so we can essentially have like print statements in our shaders, in our GPU functions, and just record out all those values into textures and record out all the values into, um, in, well, from, from the vertex stages, um, we'll need to write them into a transform feedback buffer. Um, for fragment stages, we can write them into textures. And then we can have some kind of picker so we can put things on the screen and actually look at what's going on. Um, yes, that's that's the goal. Um, and I think because we've got map G, which is a macro, and we have macros wrapping around all the actual um, pipelines themselves, we can generate this stuff pretty transparently to the user. And then all the time, every time you do a draw call, we actually do n draw calls. And the first... First n minus one 
are just for all the debugging information and then the last one is actually drawing to the screen uh, or the actual FBO that, FBO that you'd originally bound. Um, Chimera, it's been a month now, dude. It's fine to move on. Ah, yeah, I know. Uh, it's um, it's kind of like I'm I'm on two sides of it. In a way, this is like the fifth. What is it? Fourth episode or fifth episode on this? I think it's the fifth. Uh, yeah, part five, isn't it? Of course, it is. Um, and that's like ten hours, which is probably Saturday. <laughs> So it's it's like a it's like a weekend, uh, like a, one of these weekend projects. So um, I don't feel too bad about time wise, but I feel bad about how long we're on the same subject on the stream. Not really bad, you know. Just it's kind of disappointing. Um, so what are we at now? Oh, we got another twenty minutes. I want to understand, I'm just going to sit here and work out what's going on with these normals. Because... They... I still swear that they're somehow related to... Yeah. The fact that I move and they disappear is a bad sign. <laughs> just like that, like... Yeah. Is there something funky going on? Um, and it might just be the janky way I'm doing this, so what could I do? Well, I could just take all of this and make a new pipeline. Really quickly just dump all this out. La, 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 la. All of this. Food all this. Dump it here. Right. Back to basics. We are going to take a position. Um, which is the position of the vertex. We are going to take the height out of there. That's good. Um, seeing as we're doing unpacking of the data, we can move this. All of this actually just goes higher up. Yeah, so maybe we'll take a brief hiatus from this and try and work on something else and then get back to it. I mean, the, pur the purpose of this is for me to learn shit, so I gotta fail. It's just... It would have been cool to get a little further on this. Okay. Um, just say food off this for a minute. I'm trying to work. Um, da, 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 da. really? Okay, fine. <sighs> Unpack data from the thing. Yes. Um, we can actually just do that from the center of data. The position is plus height. That gives us the original point and then we want to calculate the normal. Now see this is hmm we calculate the normal um, which is gonna give it to us in what space? It's gonna have to be in world space. Or I mean essentially in like a I mean Essentially in world space. World to view. I wonder if we can just get away with view to clip because the world to view is a is translation and rotation of the. Hmm. Let's fart around with this for a second. It's normal. World to view. still uh that's just wherever we're pointing um yeah 
camera world to view has got to take into account the camera stuff then it's model to world world to view you could do the model to world space as well but that shouldn't have any effects that should be pure translation um, Maybe these are actually okay. It's really hard to tell, but... I mean, they're pointing... Where they're pointing there isn't great. Oh, I'm just so easily distracted. Let's look at this terrain normal again. Screwing with this should have a real effect here. So, I'm not sure why we're not seeing much of a, oh yeah, there we go, there's an effect. Could always try the normal approach that was uh, used in the um, C++ version of it as well, but we'll see. <laughs> in a world where trees always point north. Thanks, Pix. Yeah, very true. I need to review spaces. Yeah, me too, man. I started abstracting that and... Um, pretty sure gravity should be in world court space. Uh, baggers, yeah. going on here it's a good antidote to how uh, how I learned to code in 15 nanoseconds could description shows yeah I mean like this is how I learned I just sit here and slam my head against the keyboard until something happens but um the older you get, the less you know. Indeed. Um, tilt them normal trees. Absolutely. Because what I'm doing in theory is just... Oops. Where's my... Really? Oh, wow. Okay. So that's... Um, that's not behaving properly. Are we back on this one now? There is some strange behavior going on. Right. Now I'm on this computer again. Can I please control it? Right. So I have some terrain. And the idea that I was taking the height of one position and the height of the next position and getting the difference between them And then I was creating a vector which is you know, one and so I was taking the right minus the left and then the vector was this plus D there. And so the final vector would be, yeah, well that's not gonna be right, is it? No, wait, that can't be, is that what I'm doing? I hope not. Maybe it is what I'm doing. Is 
Is this just uh, just incorrect? Because the, the goal is like with a cross product, you're trying to take two vectors and then you give cross product them and you get the third vector, which is perpendicular to them both. So this is going to be the normal of some plane. And the idea was I wanted to specify um, yeah, th no, this is actually correct because this is the vector going this way, which would be one of these, say x. And then I was going to do the same thing in the z dimension um, to get y here and then the cross product would have given me the normal. That was the idea. But I'm... Um, ooh. Interesting. Hmm. I don't have to invert them now, at least. Um, I think that's the right way to do this. I'm a little confused that this doesn't seem to make much of a difference, though. That disturbs me. Because um, that's like saying that... It doesn't matter what the y component is, like either of these seem to be identical. It's being dominated by this minus one. Mm, not happy with that. Don't really understand. Okay. <laughs> Anyone knows why it defaults to gray when the textures aren't being rendered? In what? Sorry, nobody's lemons. Um... Yeah, like if your clear color is gray, that would make sense. Um, but by default, clear color is black. So it's a little strange. What about disabling perspective to see the normals without distortion? Ah, uh, I'm a little nervous about it just because I... I'm so unused to looking at things in orthographic mode that like, I don't know if I would actually get useful data out of that. Come on, you fuckers. So what am I, what am I missing? How can that be having no effect? That is super strange. Like, changing the X and Z component has an effect. Whew. If I set this to one, yeah, then it... So it's just suggesting that the change in height is is either very low or incorrect. That's interesting. Um, yeah, if the change in height was absolutely minuscule, then maybe Maybe something making sense here. And for it to be absolutely tiny, I would have expected. Okay. Let's look at the values that are being passed in here. Left, right, top, bottom of data. So these are the neighbors. Um, okay, so we have a struct. Height, water, sediment. Left, right, top, and bottom are all vec fours. 
each VEC4 is storing the height, the water depth, sediment, and nothing else at the moment. And that means this accessor is pulling out this member. The we're querying the tech to populate all of these in order. We're querying, let's see if I get this right, height water sediment map, these positions, which is based on the UVs. UVs, again, is another struct. There we go, the erosion UVs up here. Takes in a texture size, creates a text step. Um, Then the UV is this. Shouldn't be anything magical here. So the center is just UV. Left is minus the texture step. F, yeah, so right is the texture step to the right. Top is texture step in the, in the uh, Y direction, bottom is minus, and then you start doing the other neighbors. Now we're not even using those for this normal stuff, so that's not relevant. That looks fine. Left, right, top, bottom, blah, blah, blah. We use that here. Again, looks correct. Oops. Looks correct when you don't delete everything. No, this isn't, nothing's jumping out here. Hmm. Oh yeah, that gray stuff in the background is just the water and that's, um, yeah. That'll get textured some, probably at some point. Nobody's lemons. I'm going to reread the Arc Synthesis Open GL book for the seventh time. There is never too many times to read that book. That is so good. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Anton um, Gerdelan. Open GL. Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh, nice. Oh, and some stuff on compute as well. Oh, that would be a good distraction. Right. Bloody hell, Barrett, what are you linking there? That's massive. <laughs> oh, it's not a problem, man. It was just such a long URL. What are those, anyway? Great-great-grandfather or something. Oh, is, is your great-great-grandfather did those pictures. They're fucking cool. Right. Oh, I feel like I'm running into a dead end here. Um, what do I do? What do I do? Well, I don't type on this <laughs> machine. Actually, we had some stuff before for this, didn't we? Um, what happened to Fraggle and stuff? What was... I don't remember what it is now. Repositories. Fraggle, it was called Fraggle. There we go. Um, missed GPU functions. So 
wasn't this one we were fucking around with. Put the shaders play. Hmm. I thought we did some messed around with some terrain in here, but guess not. Okay. So what did I want to do? I was thinking of passing Yeah, if I have the position, and I calculate the heights, and that gives us a new position, and that gets transformed. Um, no, I'm not going to be able to generate the normals from here. I'd have to do this in the next step. Um, So this would almost have to be identical to what it is now. And then the next one I just generate this. That doesn't feel like this is going to get a better result. Okay, I think I'm going to just call this quiz for tonight on this one, because, yeah, we're fighting debugging stuff now, and that's just no fun. So I'll look at what, I have to look into something else to be dealing with this, and then we'll play with something else. I think I want to give this uh, terrain stuff a break for a couple of weeks until we have some better tools, or unless I come up with something uh, off stream that's fun about it, because this is just starting to weigh down now. And um, we'll revisit this. Yeah, revisit this when we got some progress. Um, ideas on what you guys uh, want to see, we'll have a go at that. Um, I might dig up some more reliable, <laughs> more reliable sources uh, of stuff we can learn from. I think maybe I'm still at the point with uh, shaders that I need to get good code and start from that and just try and because we did those weeks where we took like uh, the uh, Perlin noise functions and all that, we knew they were correct at the beginning. And then we just broke them down and understood uh, to learn how they work. And that was really good fun. Um, I guess I'm not quite at the point where translating these papers into GLSL is working that well for me. But um, yeah. You could show how to generate terrain in tessellation geometry shaders. Yeah, we could totally do that. I mean, like, I, I don't think that'd be very tricky. Um, I mean, just throwing some Perlin noise on doing some tessellation, that would be, that'd be pretty fast. We could do that. Bring back the pepperoni. Yeah, we can get back to the pizza game again. Hey, Rinku, thank you very much for the follow. Um, yeah, and some Boyd stuff, that would be sick. That'd be really good. So yeah, um, coloring of terrain based on slopes, that sounds very doable. That'd be kind of interesting, actually. What's the easiest way to do that? I mean, we've taken the neighbor positions and... Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Um, CL... Uh, C code? That looks like Om Nom. <laughs> but I'm not sure where you're getting at there, man. Um, yeah, all of that sounds sounds really doable. In fact, I'll probably save those suggestions and we'll just have a go at those because that shouldn't be too hard in fact com combining the uh, tessellation and geometry and all that that sounds pretty easy cool <laughs> some kind of fact oh the other thing i was thinking of uh trying to get into is with like either I, if you guys would be interested, I could just do some weeks of um, hacking on Keppel itself as well. Because there's stuff that I need to get done. So if, uh, if we just want to hang out one week and I can um, 
bang away on bits of uh, Keppel that need working on and yeah, we can just talk shit as we normally do, then that's definitely an option. Yeah, and particle systems, I think we could do that, no problem. <laughs> Geometry clip maps sound mental. Yeah, it's uh, in trial. Yeah, I just... I can make my stream making your engine. Oh, man. I can't even get my own stuff working, man. I can't, I can't start on yours yet. So, where do we get in this? I don't know what we did, actually. Let's, uh... <laughs> what did we achieve? What have we learned from all this? It makes me think of the, uh, thing, the, uh... What is it? Burn after reading. Fuck if I know. Alright, so we don't want to keep this. And, uh... None of this is actually of value. Except that, maybe. This isn't. And this bit isn't. And what was all this? Oh, this is all the stuff that just failed. Nope. Goodbye. And uh, here, what have we got? Well, that's not needed. That was just a different value. This one is... Oh yeah, that was worth keeping. Okay, so we've, we've tweaked a little, but um, still, not great success. Bam, bam, okay. Yeah. Guess that's it. <laughs> Kepler and FPGA, oh Jesus. Yeah, that's what I need as well as my stupidity is just meta stability thrown into the problem as well. <laughs> Oh man, I, again, I, some of the reading I've been doing recently that's just saying CPUs kind of FPGA. I, I, I am interested in looking into more kind of the data oriented design stuff, but I don't think that'll make good for good streams. The stuff I'm doing at the moment is mainly on the whiteboard and um, just thinking about stuff. I wish there was a good way to measure, like I wanna make a, um, a little test function that just does a load of processing. And I would love to be able to get cache misses and stuff like this in the profile information from SBCL. That would be, that would be lovely. Um. <laughs> no, we're not gonna cross the clock debates, fucking hell. Um, yeah, let's just, <laughs> episode 12, accidental latches everywhere. Um, yeah. So, Unless you have any more things to yell, I think we call this another failed stream and um, we call it a night. <laughs> Flank doesn't swan. The latch man cometh. Oh dear. I'm pouring, pouring liquid in my head and it's not getting better. Fail for the win! Absolutely. Thank you all for sticking around for so long. Um, it was... It was fun with you here. <laughs> Let's put it that way. A little slow on the stream. Uh, but otherwise, fine. Okay. Um, I'm calling it a night. Catch you guys later. And next week we'll do something a bit more interesting. See you then. Ciao.